today we gonna talk about the uh, hospitality finance and uh, innovations in hospitality and hospitality finance. Um, as you know, uh, uh, let me um, give you a brief uh, of what is hospitality finance. Um, so if we can move over to the next um, slide. So the hospitality finance basically has a few key functions, which includes um, this. Yes, next. which includes income audit uh, means the uh, the finance function is has to do a revenue audit of all the transactions uh, credit control and collections because hospitality is a fast moving enterprise where you have a lot of collections cash collections and credit cards um, uh, and the credit as well so the hospitality finance has to be on top of each and every transaction whether it's in cash whether it's in credit and it's a day by day uh, reconciliation. So it's in like in other other industries where you review the AR aging or the cash collections only towards the end of the month, you reconcile banks only towards the end of the month. In hospitality finance, it has to be done on a daily basis. Every night the balance, the books are balanced. Next day, the uh, finance department is working hard to reconcile the cash collections with the income, the credit card collections with the bank statements and also the credit cards and also the credit uh, granted to various companies or travel agents. Then we have general accounting like any other uh, accounting in any other industry, uh, general finance, general accounting for accounts payable, CAPEX, uh, operation expenses, uh, expense accruals. So that's part of also a small process for the month and accounting for finance. Apart from general accounting, you have uh, purchasing, you may have, um, can we move on to next? We have the other uh, departments such as payables and purchasing. Payables and purchasing again uh, are the another important aspect, uh, which is pretty much similar to uh, other any other industry where we manage the payables. The only um, difference between the um, between in the hospitality industry is that we have multiple type of purchases. You have food purchase, you have general electric purchase, you have services where you may be paying advance, you may be paying in monthly basis, you may be paying on a daily basis. Some are on a weekly credits. So since we are dealing with multiple size of uh, of suppliers, the complexity of the payable function is much more than in any other uh, organization. Purchasing is again a very, very important aspect of um, the hotels because we don't want to manage the inventory, a very high inventory, but also we don't want, we cannot afford to be on a short of inventory because um, it's a fast moving industry. If we are um, short of any um, sale, is not is short of any product, we will lose the sales immediately and it's going to be a loss of the income for the property unlike any other industry where you if you don't if you're not able to support the uh, customer with a with today or on demand you can still uh, have a chance to recover um, the customer or deliver them the products and services next day or even after two days in hotels if the demand is not meet the way the, at the moment where it is raised, it's lost, right? For example, you ask for a food, you are asking for, uh, let's say, a fish curry. If you don't have the fish in the hotel, the income is gone on that day. The supply, the, the guest is not going to come back and eat the next day because they may go and eat somewhere else. Unlike, unlike in any other industry, for example, t TV, car, or any consumables, where even if you don't have it, you can still uh, be able to make the sales the next day because the customer may not buy that immediately because it's not a consumption in meat on production. Hospitality is consumption upon production. If you produce and you consume immediately. There is no stock of because it's a service. Then there are a lot of, uh, because it's a fast paced industry income, there is a lot of income coming from different sources. The hotel is getting income from direct bookings, from travel agents, from corporates. Just like airlines, you have uh, online travel agents, uh, you have the uh, portals which are aggregators. So we are getting a lot of income uh, from different, different sources. And we have tons of expenses. 
So there is a requirement to be a very strong control and analytical services where there are specified control uh, functions in the hospitality who are doing uh, the job of only controls and doing the, only the analytics. So there are revenue management uh, department in the marketing analysis department who their job is just to understand where the income has been coming from, uh, what countries are booking us, where the guests are coming from, what channels are more functional on a week by week basis, not a month basis or not in six months. We are not doing that because the hospitality is changing very, very fast nowadays. So how is it different from the other uh, industry? If we can move over to the next, um, then we will be seeing the unique features of the property. So the first uh, feature is, is fast pace and high volume transactions. There is a lot of check-ins uh, in any um, in any hotel with a large inventory or even with a small inventory. There is tons of check-ins, check-outs every day. There are people eating, there are people settling the cash by credit cards. Um, and there are many services, right? There are uh, spa services, FNB services, um, business center services. So there are a lot of services and they are all sometimes paid in cash or uh, immediately settlement. So it needs very strong internal controls to be able to reconcile everything, everything. So it's a constant reconciliation. Every night the books are closed. And because the hospitality is generating tons of information, there are guest information, there is uh, market information. If, so we have to keep the information in segmentation. So there are there is a very structured way of how the hotel finance works. There are nowadays a very standard report based on a lot of uh, years of experience. There are systems which have been designed called uniform system of accounting for uh, lodging industries, usually, uh, which is a very detailed, um, detailed um, set of standards detailed set of accounting definitions, detailed set of the uh, reports that are that are supposed to be generated to enable the management decision in a standard way. But since every hotel is different, every resort is a difference. Uh, the standard, apart from the standard report, the hotel is also creating their own internal set of records or internal uh, reports to understand their business in a much more detailed manner. So for that, we need to have a cost center accounting because there are multiple profit centers in the hospitality. There is a room, there is a front office, there is a F&B department, there is a cost, there is a spa department, there is a transportation department, there is a telephone department. So in order to understand the profitability of each and every cost function, uh, we the hospitality has to maintain, do a cost accounting immediately. And because many costs are, standardized, many costs are supported by few functions or are centralized to save money. There is a constant allocation of cost means there has uh, normally the hotel has to decide how they are going to allocate the cost or uh, common cost to multiple to individual production departments so that they can get the profitability of each and every department in accurate, accurate way and in a uh, fast paced manner every month. They have to review the profit and loss statement of every cost center, every profit center and understand whether we are making money or not. Many a times we have to close the departments because they are not either able to make the money enough or are suffering from the losses. Uh, the other difference in the unique uh, in the uh, hospitality industry is the finance is a support service. And because finance is not just only a back office work where is uh, doing the accounting only. Finance is a part of operations because it's linked with the multiple departments as an input. Uh, so, for example, you will collect the advance. So, the advance, is coll advance collection process is done by finance. Unless we have reported that on a timely basis, the guest will not be able to check in and their folio will not be correct. And uh, because there is a lot of data involved in uh, operations, there is a lot of re revenue which is being generated. Uh, the costs are uh, for coming from multiple um, ways. We normally have, um, there is a lot of data that needs to be generated by uh, multiple departments in order to make the decisions in a faster manner. So we normally have uh, 
quite the finance is putting up a very big role in decision making every every day uh, as a hosp- as a hotel expert i have to attend the meetings i may have to make the operational decisions even though i'm just only managing the finance uh, and the books of accounts i am involved in the uh, we are involved in the operations as much as any other operational manager is doing it so uh, the the um, finance is supporting big time in decision making processes there are multiple decisions taken on a daily basis uh, food prices sir, uh, our room prices whether we should do a discounted promotion or not whether we should be uh, offering um, whether we should be accepting a, a banquet functions or not instead of a regular a room booking so all these decisions finance is equally important as any other department of revenue manager or the general manager of the hotel uh because uh, in proper in hospitality finance is the gatekeeper of all the profitability cash and revenue transactions uh, is also interested by the owners because in hotels generally the operators and the owners are different right uh, in unlike any other business where uh, the owner and the operator of the property are the same person in hotels is different hotels is can be owned by one person one company and it can be managed by another company so usually there is all the finance department also have to play a very tight role in making sure that uh, the the operators interest and also the owners interest in terms of profit maximization in terms of property control uh, property safety are maintained so that's the unique feature of hospitality finance now let us look at the um, few, few key innovations that technical in technology innovations and service innovations in hospitality which are happening around the world at this point of time so there is a specialized software now hospitality has a lot of different functions for example they have reservation systems they have a property management system they have accounting systems they have procurement systems for supply and chain management so these are all and then they have revenue management systems there there are planning financial planning tools which are customized to their specific requirements um for accounting uh, there is a zero there there are many multiple accounting software for supply chain there are multiple accounting softwares which are specialized and have much detailed um, much detailed value of the much detailed and uh, depth of controls there is no single software uh, in the hospitality which is able to serve all the functions all the facet of the operations in one go so there are multiple softwares means that there is either a lot require a lot of interface between one software and another software because they are all working as input and output of um, each and other so either there has to be a manual entry between the between the uh, software so that they are functional or there has to be a in, uh, there has there is a normally a interface uh, done within these uh, within these softwares and a lot of reconciliations is required so that's the impact of those um, technical inno- technological innovations the companies the tech companies are investing more and more into making their individual softwares like for reservations for property management system for accounting as much as robust as they can but they can only focus on one uh, operational aspect of the uh, hotel operations rather than the entire operation so uh, sometimes the hotels are buying uh, software from multiple companies they has to it means that it has to be uh, interfaced but in that case also we have automation services right so uh, hospitality nowadays is moving into the automation of processes uh, qr codes now uh, you might be seeing when because of covid you go into any hotel you are presented with a qr code where you have to bring your own device i e you have to use your own mobile to scan the bar, to scan the, uh, the the menu or look at the guest information from your own device because of the covid because of also the cost saving it's much more cost effective 
to implement the QR code and bring your own device applications rather than printing the menu. So for some hotels, it's even a blessing in disguise because they don't have to now reprint the menus. They can use uh, these QR codes and ask the guests to scan by themselves in the disguise of uh, COVID functionality. Then there are virtual reality and augmented reality menus where you can be, you see, the, you press the QR code and then the menu is in front of your eyes. The dish is a 3D degree, 3D design of the dish. You can actually feel how big is it, how deep is it, what kind of functionalities are there. Uh, you cannot, of course, touch it, but you can view it in much more details. Then there are uh, AI, artificial intelligence and machine learning chatbots, which are offering the reservation service. So when you go to a web hotel website, there is usually a chatbot offered asking your present, asking your um, your preferences, your uh, area of uh, interest. They may also make your recommendations, what kind of room you should be uh, booking at. There are usually the chatbots for uh, interacting with the with the with the with the guest at the time of uh, at the time of check-in, or if you want to do any room service, the chatbots would be able to get you the, uh, the services which which we, which is required in the in the in your in the get for the guest. Uh, you may be required to have a service, which means that uh, you may uh, you you are asking for let's say a recommendation. So the chatbot would be able to give you those recommendations without any manual interface, right? Uh, you can request for the uh, housekeeping service. You can request for any items to be delivered to your room. Those are all are nowadays handled by chatbots. Then there are real-time translations because the hospitality has multiple type of guests who may be uh, who uh, who may be speaking different languages. You may have guest who is Chinese or even in if you're talking about india you have multiple languages you have uh, south indian languages north indian languages western indian languages uh, and all the staff are not able to speak all the languages so you may be so nowadays hotels are also trying to con to have a customer service in the native language of the guest so they are able to choose the uh, language but the person who is answering Maybe maybe looking at it is in their own native language. Maybe they are uh, they are looking the chat in the English, or they are looking chat in, in in Hindi, or they are looking at chat in any other language. But the guest is looking at those trans uh, those tra uh, those trans those chat in their own language. So there is a real time trans real time translation happening between the between the guest and the reservation agent. So that's uh, a very um, innovative way of hospitality which is being done now. Uh, moving over to the other uh, innovations in, in hospitality. There are smart hotel systems, which are now working with Alexa, working with the, uh, with the other uh, type of uh, voice control devices. There are Internet of Things, where you can download the app of the hotel room and you can control your air con, you can control your refrigerator, mini bar, guest ordering system. Then there are RFID enabled uh, door locks in these uh, in the theme. There are smart lightings because uh, you have you may have a different setting for your at home. So you will be able to set up your own uh, lighting. Uh, lighting in the in the uh, in the tech so that you can have a better sleep as per your own requirements so you all the guests in in the past stand, hotel has a standard light right nowadays you have stand, uh, you have smart lighting which you can ad, the guests can adjust based on their own uh, things then there are energy efficient installations because the hospitality is now moving over to sustainable operations so uh, and the carbon is carbon footprint of the hospitality is quite high. So every hotel nowadays is moving towards energy efficient installations. There can be LED lights. There can be the uh, glasses which are filtered to let the uh, uh, sun in, but not the heat in. Uh, then there are uh, materials which are being used in the hospitality, which used to be one use plastic now is changing into the uh, another type of plastics there are um, there are temperature controlled uh, glasses uh, on and the materials um, 
which are energy efficient. So the hospitality is moving towards energy efficient to reduce their carbon footprint. Apart from the uh, technology, there is always there is other, another emphasis being on the environmental sustainability, especially after this um, pandemic. The hotels are trying to be more sustainable now and more energy um, uh, energy responsible. So we are changing the clean products, cleaning products to be the green cleaning products. We have green housekeeping, we have green laundry, where we use the chemicals which are not environmentally damaged, right? So we try to use the products which are environmental friendly, does not require a very high temperature because high temperature requires a lot of electricity. They are able to clean on a low environment, but still able to clean and kill all the germs. Then there are amenities, uh, as I said earlier, we are moving away from one use plastic rather than to biodegradable uh, material for storing the amenities or even refillables so that you are, we are able to reduce the uh, reduce the plastic or use in the hotel then uh, a bigger uh, part of the plastic in the hotels is the straw and the water bottles which are lying around everywhere uh, in the past hotel used to give only 250 grams bottle or half a liter bottle to one guest so that they can reduce the water consumption but increase but that increased the plastic consumption now even the five star hotels are moving away from that instead of they are giving the aluminium bottles and uh, uh, putting up the refillable stations either inside the rooms or in the public area so whether you go into the hotel you don't get a plastic bottle you get an aluminium bottle for you you can fill up anywhere in the property and you can bring it out and then uh, bring it back so that you reduce the plastic level of the consumption the uh, papers, the uh, the plastic straws are being changed to either the uh, glass straw or the uh, bamboo straws or the paper straws. Then they are net zero carbon emissions. So hotels are trying to reduce their carbon footprint by having to contribute positively. So because uh, it is not possible to uh, make the uh, eliminate the carbon consumption at all because we are still using the electricity we are still using the fuel which are, which are still using the plastic in some way or the other but hotels are now in uh, putting up more uh, plants uh, uh, greenhouses in their own compounds so that they can bring the net carbon emissions to a lower level or to a net zero level so many hotels are now trying to bring it to net zero so those are the few key innovations in the hospitality space, whether it terms comes from the operational or from the technology. There are a few processes, innovations happening in the hospitality finance, uh, which we can look over now. So the innovation in finance is coming basically from automation of accounting processes through interfacing of system, as in the first time I said, I said the hospitality is using multiple type of um, multiple type of softwares for reservations from uh, property management system. If we have to do the manual accounting or manual uh, interfacing of these these softwares, the workload on the accounting is going to be huge. So in order to save the cost, now the hotels are running very low on the manning. Be to, so, to be able to save the cost during these low occupancy times because we have very very less guests in the hotel means we have less income in the hotel so uh, everybody is doing multitasking there are uh, now uh, being trainings done for uh, instead of doing the trainings for, uh, for uh, food and beverage department for front office department for housekeeping department now the hotels are focusing on creating butlers to be able to combine everything up and say these are the resort butlers. So every they, they should be able to do everything. Similar way in accounting, we are trying to reduce the manpower by automating the system. So where we are saying that the, all the transitions from reservations to property management system, where mostly check-in, check-out and revenue happens to finance automatically without any manual interface. Then that is revenue side then you have the material management which is doing which is responsible for procurement of the systems or uh, procurement of the uh, raw material so that again is coming from material management to finance automatically without any manual interface then the other um, 
big part of the uh, hotel cost is the HR. So you have um, payroll systems to finance systems um, uh, and the invoice processing. Then you have shared services. Shared services uh, means that we are now focusing on the uh, centralizing the operations of the finance into uh, by hotel. So maybe we have cluster of hotels, which means that uh, we may be uh, centralizing the finance functions, centralizing procurement functions, centralizing the engineering functions, centralizing the housekeeping functions, especially the management part, not the actual part, but the management part. Then there are AI driven data systems now to do the revenue, to do the planning, to make the revenue pricing decisions. These decisions are done automatically. So it will not be, um, it will not be very uh, distant to say that the pricing of the hotels nowadays are defined by the, the system, not by the manual, not by the manual intervention, but by the systems. And then there are, uh, because the hospitality is also into the uh, moving of a lot of data and all are driven by the revenue, uh, all are driven by artificial intelligence, many of them. It makes it very easy for anyone to have uh, audit, uh, difficult to audit, right? So from the uh, from these uh, aspects, so these are the key innovations in uh, finance department. For entrepreneurs, uh, I would say how how the hospitality entrepreneurs or new upcoming entrepreneurs can take advantage of this. So there are few ways where the entrepreneurs can help in hospitality. There are um, Systems development means there is usually, there are a lot of companies now already there, but most of them are copying uh, the processes. So the entrepreneurs can develop the artificial intelligence or machine learning systems to be able to create the solutions for hospitality, which is not possible in a normal scenario. For example, using of uh, machine, machine learning or understanding the guest behaviors, how they are using the, um, the the IOTs or how they are using the voice control devices so that the uh, it's easier for hotels to operate with minimum manning and more appropriate operations. There are hotels which are running 100% on uh, very minimal manning, right? So if, if you have heard, if you can search, there is a, op there's a hotel operated by Alibaba in China, which is... Uh, starting from the check-in until the check-out there is no manual intervention all are done by automatic reports you will get uh, even once you do the uh, booking you get to go you get to go uh, with your rfid with your mobile you can do the check-in the lifts are controlled by the uh, by the mobiles the door locks are controlled by mobiles in the room you have uh, artificially intelligent and machine learning devices for you for to process your order. There is no, uh, no no manual intervention. All are done through robots. The actual delivery of the food is done through robots. The food is created by robots. Uh, so there are a, a lot of uh, opportunities for uh, entrepreneurs to create the food, which is um, uh, because uh, which is um, less in carbon footprint and can be done locally, can be done uh, with, uh, with uh, food which are like uh, enriched in nutrients similar to vegetarians. So there are companies who are preparing the food which is looks, which has in equally, uh, equally nutritious as the meat, but they are all plant-based. So plant-based meats are there. Uh, then you have the food delivery which is done through robots to the room. The room cleaning is done through the rooms. So there are arms which are even cre uh, creating the recipes and cooking the food. The service is done through the robots and then the checkout finally is done to the robots. So the and manual intervention really is the maintenance of robots and the maintenance of the property itself. The cleaning uh, and the guest uh, service is all done through automations. So that's, uh, that's the ultimate case of the innovations in hospitality finance. You can, uh, the entrepreneurs, Budding entrepreneurs can take uh, the inspiration from it and drive data because though that's only one hotel, one it is not scaled yet and it's very expensive to maintain that kind of hotel. So if the entrepreneurs can come up with or the innovators can come up with something which can be scalable and can be implemented at the hotel in large because you have to remember that 
the uh, 80% of the hotels around the world are unstructured not uh, not five star hotels not luxury hotels so their ability to pay uh, for the services is very low so if there is a solution which is catering to that 80% of the population of the hotels then uh, the scale is there so that is about the hospitality finance and um, innovations um, so i would be happy if there is any any questions or answers uh, that i can i answer yes so we do have a couple of questions but before that i would really like to thank you for an enlightening speech it was wonderful to hear from you sir thank you so to start uh, we have a couple of questions in hand so the first question goes human touch versus artificial intelligence in hospitality industry so would you like to share your opinion on this see uh, definitely uh, the hospitality is all about satisfying the human need of connection so you cannot have a human connection through artificial intelligence right as i was uh, giving you an example of alibaba hotel where everything is done through the robots so there is no human connection it may be good for an experience but it's not uh, something which can replace the human connection so human connection has to be there either at the time of checking in or during the stay the people has to meet you have to see the face of the person uh, you may be experiencing that in while we are studying or while we are uh, even doing the education unless we see the teacher unless we see the facial expression of somebody who is teaching us you you will not be able to feel connected you cannot learn everything through the ready made videos so similar way the hospitality is cannot be served by artificially intelligent uh, devices alone the human touch still has to be there and there are many many things like emotions right you you understand you look at the guest face and understand what they may need the in in the luxury hotels the the best servers they don't need uh, the guest to tell them what they need they know by looking at the guest what is the requirement when they need salt when they need pepper when they need ice by looking at the guest from the distance they know what they need in no matter uh, however technologically advanced we get robots will never be able to do that because they you cannot understand the human uh, connections because you have billions of neurons Yes, sir. Thank you so much. We'll now go on to the next question that has been asked by Anita Raman, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, well, firstly, she appreciates you for covering the aspect of technology in hospitality, and her question is: What is the scope of hospitality industry in the near future? Ah, uh, see, as I said, the hospitality industry is the basic human need for food or for um, connection or safety the feeling hospitality touch with the emotions of the peoples not with the basic need of food and beverage with you can actually go uh, and cook by yourself but why you go to a restaurant you want to emo you want to express your emotions you want to celebrate with your friends you want to connect uh, you have sometimes a good connection with the servers that's why you want to go there and you want to experience that right so that human basic need will always be there no matter yes because of pandemic we are stuck by the uh, distance we we have to maintain the distance but uh, at some point of time this thing will subside and people will go back to the travel so travel even though the travel may reduce but the hospitality will not reduce because that's a human basic need you have your friends uh, even though you may not treat them in your five star hotels but uh, hospitality is not only in the restaurant or in the hotels hospitality is in your hearts right you welcome your uncle aunts uh, parents and other people in your home for, in your home so that is all hospitality so that will never go so the i would say that the uh, in scope of hospitality in the future coming future will still be there yes these are difficult times uh, means uh, at the moment the survival is a bit difficult because there is no guest but hospitality is innovating itself and is creating new opportunities for themselves thank you so much sir ma'am has another question for you uh, ma'am asks can you please throw some light on how entrepreneurs startups can benefit from technological innovations in hospitality industry yeah 
so there are many technological innovations in hospitality which uh, i feel are quite important uh, especially when it comes to material management when it comes to uh, reducing the or uh, doing the multitasking the automation of certain processes not everything but certain processes uh, for example at the moment hospitality industry is pretty labor intensive right when you go to the room you you will take around 1 hour to clean the room but what if there are ready there are now already ready made uh, robots small robots which are not big ones the smaller ones which are uh, special purpose so there are glass cleaning robots you put it outside the window and they will clean the glass by itself so the housekeeper just no need to spend time on doing that there are artificial intelligent robots who are able to do the carpet cleaning so the the entrepreneurs can uh, can think of what are the general problems there are multiple problems which the hospitality industry is facing now uh, because of the uh, crisis because of they want to manage the labor cost so they can come up with the solutions which are helpful for hotels hoteliers to manage their operations faster economically and labor, less labor intensive so that way it's very easy for them to create solutions so whether it can be the equipments whether it can be the software as i said there are multiple different type of software so if there are entrepreneurs or tech uh, tech enthusiasts who may want to create a interface or a link between the multiple softwares the hotel hoteliers life would be very very easy all right thank you so much sir there's uh, the next question is uh, how do you how do the tourism and the hospitality industry reform after the covid-19 pandemic mm -hmm. yeah that's a very good question uh, but unfortunately i cannot answer that 100% uh, because that are, we are still in reforming we are still uh, upcoming right uh, but a few ways as i was uh, saying during the uh, during the session was that we are nowadays focusing on innovations of processes so multitasking multi skilling of people in the past we used to run with multiple departments right so the concept was there is a front office there is a fnb there is a housekeeping and you don't touch each other now is not like that because we have very few guests in the hotel so we cannot we cannot afford to to have five people to serve one guest so we need one person who can serve one guest so we are now multi skilling all the people so that they can they can take on the different roles because we are not busy all the time then there are technological innovations so we are all we are refining our process we are refining our standards of how we deal with the customer uh, do we really need all full service because now if for example in one of my hotels um, i am reviewing the whether do we really need to continue to have in room dining for example because there are very few guests i have to keep the kitchen uh, ready for 24/7 i cannot afford to do that because there is electricity consumption there is a people consumption and my revenue is not enough so why do i need to do that can i stick can i stay away with it why do we need mini bars do we really need mini bars in the hotel so we are now reviewing each and every uh, aspect of hospitality to see whether it makes sense or it does not make sense so if they are not making sense we are going to change them so that's how we are um, reforming it all right thank you sir um the next question is from uh, mr pranay nath he asks on a scale of 1 to 10 how much do you think the pandemic has affected the hotels as a follow up question he asks how are they managing their financial aspects and avoiding losses due to covid 19 uh so if on a severity scale i would say the hospital hotels are affected by like 8 or 9 on a scale of 10 means severely affected not completely shut down but severely affected uh yeah it's very difficult uh, to manage the financial impact uh, because uh, the, we have fixed costs right we have fixed electricity costs we have fixed labor costs so the only way to manage is the slashing of cost uh, whether it's forceful or through the mutual understanding of the people involved so we are actually uh, doing the downsizing of people we are multi scaling means we are reducing the the labor labor strength then we are also looking at the uh, the techno the uh, the innovations in the techno uh, technical part the ut utility consumption part so 
whether implementing the solar energy, whether implementing the uh, LED lights, changing with the halogen, which are still not uh, done at many hotels. So we are doing those, trying to reduce the fixed cost to stay afloat and still try to, if not make profit, at least break even, cash break even. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, Sainath, sir, has a question. Mm -hmm. He asks, uh, hospitality is all about the human touch. Just like human emotions evolve, so does the hospitality industry. The classic example is that of the OYO model, which once upon a time became a hallmark for quality, but today is clearly failing. Do you think it is because a successful model stayed glued to a time-tested premise and refused to adapt as in yeah. continue to innovate? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think that's... That's a very nice observation, uh, Mr. Saina. Thank you very much for that. Uh, yeah, I would say the the uh, the traditional uh, touch is still needed, uh, and the the, uh, the time tested models are always still uh, valid. I think the OYO is failing because probably they they try to change too far and too fast by without creating the fundamentals strong for themselves of the service standards because hotels are not about the uh, infrastructure or being efficient in the rates. They are more about the service culture. So unless we bring those cultures in, um, the hotels will not be successful in the longer term. Uh, we have a lot of case, case studies like uh, the, the service uh, culture, the excellence, uh, which we say Four Seasons or the Star Wars, uh, those kind of hotels, they are still successful because they represent quality. Um, is there any other question? Uh -huh. I think we lost Adyasha, sir. Uh -huh. Yeah, Adyasha had some issues, I guess. Not having That's right. Technical issues. Yeah, would you wish to continue, Jaili? Okay, I, I'll ask my question aloud, uh, Mr. Manish. Hmm? Uh, one thing I had in mind is uh, you were talking a lot about the need to continuously innovate and there are lots of opportunities you presented where uh, innovation is still taking place and is definitely likely to take place in the future. Uh, my question is uh, hospitality industry has largely been one major sector which has remained aloof from the educational institutions. Uh, but now when you're talking about innovations, uh, if an educational institute uh, would lay, say offer to collaborate with the hospitality industry in its pursuit for innovating. How open do you think the industry would really be? Uh, for education industry, I think they would be, uh, I mean, the hospitality industry, right? Yeah. What I'm yeah. saying is uh, like uh, when you need technology to introduce many of the innovations and technology is uh, crucible happens to be educational institutions, which by and large, uh, there has been a clear divide between mixing the two. Mm -hmm. Now, let us say a window is opening wherein an educational institute would like to collaborate with the hospitality industry in its pursuit for introducing innovations. How open do you think the industry would be? At this point of time, I would say if the hotels are, uh, I mean, the, the leaders, hospitality, I'm not saying about every hospitality leader. I can talk for myself, like say, or a few of the hospitality leaders that I know, they, we are quite open for testing and experimenting uh, with the uh, being a hospitality educator myself, uh, I try and test my own ways on with my team at my own hotels. Uh, even though the, the traditional hospitality industry leaders are still not really um, inclined on the testing because innovations happen with testing and failing. Um, sometimes the hospitality, because as a, it's, a, it's a face, like it's a brand image, we are not really ready to test and fail because if we fail means that we may lose the brand value of the of the hotel so but we cannot survive without doing that so there are a few uh, hotel lead, hoteliers and leaders who are now ready to uh, try and fail means they are ready to implement or ready to innovate in their own offerings so i think the industry is getting quite open because uh, we have understood that if we don't change, if we don't innovate, we won't survive for a long time. Sir, 
So one more question from Anita ma'am. Yeah. Anita Raman ma'am. What is the type of funding that is required for the future prospectors that you are investing? Funding means in terms of value? Yeah, I would ask myself. <laughs> Hi, Manish. Uh, so the, the type of industry that you are, uh, you know, in the scope and the future is of getting the robotics on place and, you know, integrating a lot of technology with hospitality. What kind of uh, funding sources possibly you are seeing, uh, you know, in terms of funding uh, such kind of uh, massive, tremendous growth? Yeah. In future, in future, once the the virus is being controlled a little bit, I think the hotels would fund by themselves uh, on the innovations. But uh, I guess some of the ideas are, uh, if let's say we are talking about uh, innovating only for five stars, so there are different level of hospitality. If we are talking about only innovating for five star hotels, uh, probably venture capitalists will also not really be interested to invest at this point of time because the scale of potential growth is very limited because we are now moving into an era of hospitality where everybody is looking for value of money means the medium scale hotels would be thriving in my understanding the four star hotel the three star hotel or the uh, like like four and a half star hotels they would be more um, inclined for a growth rather than the top notch where very few people can uh, afford and the lower category people won't trust so even if they, if you can afford them, but you won't, you won't, you're not going to trust them for quality and uh, safety. So it means the middle tier, which is good for quality and can be trusted for the safety, are going to be the uh, front leader in the coming uh, coming times, right? So if the innovations are targeted at them and they are the majority of the uh, the hotels uh, that we see around nowadays. Uh, if they had that, probably uh, the, bench, the 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 NGOs, uh, especially those who are, if they say it's an environmental something, I'm sure the the uh, the United Nations or the WHOs, those kind of uh, organizations would be happy to fund. Uh, I have seen uh, funding from government for uh, solar energy uh, in our hotels. We we got fundings for implementing the solar uh, projects in our property. So if there are innovators who would like to try and test, uh, there are there has been some uh, government fundings coming from uh, reducing, changing the light, electricity in the lightings in the hotel, which was large scale consumption of the electricity. So uh, I think there are fundings available from virtual uh, venture capitalists and also the NG, uh, United Nations or the government, depending on what kind of uh, uh, project is it. But it needs to target probably to the middle tier, uh, I would say, not to the top tier, not to the bottom tier. Okay, I was just, thank you for that. I was just looking at, uh, you know, how the entrepreneurs in that segment would be, you know, funding. Uh, if you could some uh, throw some light around it, as you said, you know, venture capitalists mm -hmm. funding or private equity. What would be the possible uh, uh, scope of funding there? As you very well said that you know the tier B and then uh, the four star and not five star, but of course there's a scale of uh, possibilities there in could bring in funding, right? And hospitality industry being very capital intensive. How good are the returns that uh, you know is able to generate and give to its uh, investors? You could throw some light on that. Yeah, uh, because the uh, I think the returns, I mean, returns from the hospitality innovations are quite. Um, I mean, I would not say it's quite quick because hospitality returns are has been very low uh, due to various factors. Uh, those are not in really direct control of the hospitality tipping in different spaces in around the world. So the returns are not, uh, and it's a capital intensive. So it means the returns you cannot expect in like two year, three year, four years. So you won't be able to get 10 X or 20 X growth in the, in, on the investment. It's usually somewhere about seven, 10 to 15 years, uh, which takes uh, usually takes to return the money in any hospitality project. For me, my experience, has been minimum five years on any kind of investment in um, in a restaurant or in a hotel or any kind of project usually. It takes a long time. So uh, 
there are um, debt funds, I think, who are ready to invest in those kind of uh, slow or low growth uh, projects, but those are sustainable. So I think the the hotels uh, or the the entrepreneurs has to really show with the conservative numbers that it's going to give the money in maybe 10 or 15 years, though probably the debt funds would be also be interested in doing that. So there has to be a project report which shows how uh, it's either A, safe for guests, B, is environmental friendly, and lastly, it's not going to lose the money. <laughs> sir, uh, there is one last question, sir. This is from uh, Subradipta Basu Chaudhary. He asks, is AI cost effective or human labor cost effective? Uh, and do you think yeah. Sorry. Uh, AI has, uh, he says that AI has high installation cost, but does uh, it have high uh, maintenance cost also? I wouldn't say, I don't know. Uh, uh, I What I have seen is the AI is much cheaper uh, compared to human cost over a long period of time. I mean, if you, if you talk about uh, two years, three years down the line. Uh, immediate, yes, uh, development cost is pretty high. But if you, there are many models nowadays which are uh, available as a subscription and is not very expensive to implement. Uh, and uh, you cannot compare AI with uh, humans uh, because they are have both different capabilities. The things that AI can do, humans cannot do it at all. Uh, whatever, how many humans you do, you, you cannot analyze uh, 10,000 or 15,000 or 100,000 lines of data uh, in, in a short period of time, right? no, no matter how many people or how fast you are. But AI cannot do what humans can do, means understanding the uh, emotions and connecting with the people. So they are both different. Uh, and normally we don't replace humans with AI. Uh, that cannot be done uh, because you have different uh, scope of work. For certain transactions, yes, AI is cheaper to install. And I mean, AI is overall cheaper to, to use compared to the labor intensive. For example, uh, we are now uh, using the uh, invoice ready, you know, the processing of invoices. So uh, we just scan the invoice, it goes, it goes to the system automatically. After a repetitive, in, uh, uh, tech, uh, repetitive, uh, install, uh, repetitive work, it can get perfect. It will not get 100% perfect, but it will get uh, close to perfect. So it will be faster and easier for to just to scan the invoice and get it entered into the accounting system and where one person can go and sit and verify the transactions rather than having uh, multiple people to key in the data manually. So in a longer term, AI is cheaper, but you cannot uh, use them as a substitute of each other. All right. Thank you, sir. That was the last question for this webinar. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, before I end this webinar, I would like to extend my gratitude to the guest speaker, Sir Manish Gupta, for apprising us on the concerned topic. Thank you so much, sir. I would thank also you. like to thank uh, all the dignitaries and participants for joining in. Thank you. Thank you so much.